Right. Okay, Rosado, and he's no introduction today. Um, hey, man, just, just give me your thoughts on the fight of hands since we're here for Jaime Munguia's media day. You face Jaime Munguia, just give me your thoughts on it since this media day. No, man, it's going to be a great fight, you know what I'm saying? You got a young fighter that's going to press the action. Canelo is the veteran who's going to try to, you Is that know, smart if he presses the action? Uh, he got to press the action. You know what I'm saying? Like, Canelo's a big puncher, though. Yeah, but... You know what I'm saying? It's like... Doesn't he have to pitch like a shutout, like have no real mistakes to, to make it at least 12 rounds if, if, if he can possibly, you know? And if he presses the action, well, then, kind of... Well, then you tell him, then you tell him Munguia to fight out of character. And it's like, this is his style is what got him to this point. True. And it's like, when it comes down to it, it's like, you gotta remember, this is a big money fight. This is pay-per-view. This is Mexican versus Mexican. Like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta give the fans... Uh, what they want, and it's like you know, Mungia's strength is coming forward. You know, I think if he if he tries to move around, then he gives Canelo a slower pace, and then it allows Canelo to just kind of just think and set up his shots. Where when you press and you press him, you know, you wanna you wanna test the older fighter out. You wanna see where he's at if he can hold that pace, because the older fighter is always gonna wanna slow the pace down. The younger fighter, we already know Mungia could fight high pace from round one to round 12. So I prefer seeing Mungia bringing that kind of, uh, but you know, Canelo can use his experience to to maybe get shots in between, find holes, find openings, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But Mungia gotta stick to what, what, what makes him Mungia, is being a pressure fighter. And of course, man, the big fight this past Saturday. And, and just because you're a pressure fighter doesn't mean reckless. You could be a pressure fighter and be smart, you know what I'm saying, and establish a jab and walk in with a jab and walk in with body shots. You don't, have to, go with yeah, you don't have to go in there reckless. Just, you know, just be smart, tackle it. Yeah, um, the big fight this past Saturday, Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney, did you catch it and what it thoughts? Yeah, for sure. No, it was great. You know, what? Ryan winning didn't surprise me. And the way he won didn't surprise me. What surprised me was that Haney didn't make adjustments. That's what surprised me. What surprised me was that Haney and his team went into that fight knowing that Ryan's shot is the hook. And That's what he, he fought with. with his hand right here. You know, then then keep that keep then keep that hand up. You know what I'm saying? Where take away take away that weapon. You know, he kept the hand down and he was pressing without jabbing. He was kind of in boxing, we call it when you're walking in naked. You're walking in naked. And Ryan's too fast, too powerful for you to fight him in the, in the way that Haney did. So what surprised me more was Haney's approach. I'm you know saying Ryan is a dog and he can punch. And Haney, he kind of went right into, into you know, he, he went right, he fell right into the trap. Do you think it's because, you know, all the stuff that Ryan was doing before the fight, he might thought it'd be like, a, a walkthrough for him or something? Do you think any of that had, had any anything this to do is, with it? This is a mind. This is a mind game. Boxing is chess, not checkers. So part of part of the mind games, you know, what I'm saying you can't fall for it. So yeah, Brian was acting like this, and he was talking, he was saying this, and he was saying that, and like you know, he had everybody wondering, like, yo, is he really good? Like, what's going on? So people are wondering. But at the end of the day, you gotta approach that fight with a game plan and discipline. And I don't know that if Haney allowed the antics to change his approach and be a little reckless and a little wild when he fell into the trap. Yeah. So if he fell into the trap, then that's props to Ryan because it worked. You know, Ryan set him up for it. Yeah. Um, what about the referee, man? What do you think about the ref? The, he, the, the fans are kind of saying that he might have saved Devin Haney from being knocked out possibly in the seventh round or something like that. I felt that the ref was involving himself a bit. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, it was... Look, at the end of the day, man, um, the fight... The fight was so good that who cares what the ref was doing? You know what I'm saying? I swear. It was a, it was a great, entertaining fight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Candidate for a fight of the year, performance of the year. So, I mean, who cares what the ref did? You know what I'm saying? Performance of the year already? Who knows, man? Because Especially with it. what's going on heading no into one, the fight. No one saw Haney 
losing on the scorecards. Everyone gave Ryan the chance of knocking him out because he got that power. Yeah, true. But no one was betting on Ryan winning my decision. True. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I thought that, okay, when Henny got caught in that first round, I'm like, okay, that might be the best thing that happened to him because now he know that power real. And I'm sure he already knew that, but now he'll make an adjustment going into the, into the next round. Yeah. But he did it. Yeah. And that's what that's what surprised me. Maybe he couldn't recuperate, you know, maybe it was just... But it's part of the game, man. I'm pretty sure he was concussed. I mean, because it was... It was, a, it was hard shots. Yeah. How does it feel when the shot. fighter's concussed in the ring and you're trying to get, get your stuff back together? You know, and I, mean, I think every fighter... Are your legs like a noodle? Experience, or, or? experience is a concussion. Yeah. I mean, you're getting hit upside the head, whether it's a sparring or yeah. whatever. Um, but Do your legs go? Or, or, or like, are you like a noodle? Or? No, man, it's just, look, man, you know, you just... You really don't know what you're doing? Honestly, no, 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 look, you're in the zone of the fight. So, a concussion, a cut, a hand injury, whatever it is, you train to go through these things. You know what I'm saying? And I doubt that was the first concussion he ever suffered. You know what I mean? You've been fighting since you were a kid, getting hit upside the head. You know, you, you know what that feels like. So, you just got to train for that. Yeah. You, gotta, you know what I mean? Last thing, um, Ryan came in three pounds over, but he paid his fine. Devin was cool with it. People are making a lot out of, out of it now with the result for the fight played out. Yeah. Well, yeah, obviously it's an advantage because Ryan came in strong. But at the end of the day, Haney accepted the, uh, the terms and, you know, accepted the thing got paid 1.5 for the weight difference. Ryan said, I'm not going to train myself. You know, he trained himself in my tank and he paid the price. So this fight, he was just like, you know, I'm going to come in, whatever. Cool, appreciate you, Gage.